Hello everyone and welcome to the last video in this video series and in this video we'll actually implement the pipeline for processing videos and detecting objects in the real time. So first of all let me just quickly show you the files that I have added. So there are only two files that have been added. This, The first one is detectvideo.py and, and this video file that we'll use as an example. So this is a trailer for Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. It's the third installment in the Harry Potter series. So this was one of my favorite movies in that series because it is a turning point in the series where the series starts to go from, from children centric to a full fledged fantasy genre movie. Maybe J.K. Rowling realized in the process of writing f the first two books that this uh, story could be something more than just a children's novel. Maybe that's why she started to include a lot of deeper characters into the movie. And I'll stop right here because I don't want this to become a movie review. So let's get started. So first of all, let me just open this detectvideo.py file. And so if you watched the previous video that in which we have implemented this detect.py file, which is basically a pipeline for images. So it's quite ironic that detecting images requires more code than detecting videos, but it's not like that. Uh, we have a lot of pre-processing stuff done right here. And we don't need to do that again in this in this file. So that's why this seems much bigger. But if you have watched this video, the previous video, you'll understand most of the things that are happening here. So it won't take a lot of time. And we can just quickly get into the output. So let me just close this. Here I'm including a lot of libraries that are needed. So this function prepare input, uh, well, as the comment suggests, so it will prepare the input for neural network. It will transpose uh, an image and it will return a tensor. So PyTorch does not take image input as NumPy stores it. So we need to transpose it in the format in which PyTorch takes the inputs. So it will do that and will return the image, original image and the dimension of the image right here. Then this write operation is exactly the same as in the previous video. It just makes rectangles around the objects and it will also make rectangles around the labels of these objects. Okay, now arc parse is the same as uh, in the previous video. It will parse a lot of things. It will parse a lot of things in the command line. I've already provided the default values to most of them. So the, the input that we are working with will be video.avi. The format is important. It will only take AVI input because OpenCV supports that. Now we'll have uh, Confidence threshold, NMS threshold, configuration file, weights file, resolution. By default, I have set this to 128. You can set it to 256 or if you just keep on increasing it, the accuracy will increase, but the FPS will reduce. And uh, I'm working on a laptop here and so I don't have a very powerful GPU. So the FPS I'm getting is uh, really low, somewhere around uh, 13 to 14 FPS. So I'll speed up the video to make it seem more natural. So here we are just parsing the inputs. All right. And here we'll use that parsing the data from the parser. So we'll extract confidence and MS threshold and then uh, we'll check if CUDA is available. Number of classes is 80. I've written this multiple times. Should just delete it. The box attributes is from the first two videos you might already know that five describes all of the bounding box attributes plus number of classes uh, will store the probability of each class. Okay now we'll load the network and we'll load the classes and pickle uh, palette, color palette. We'll extract the height and that height will be the input dimension. Okay so if CUDA is available, send the model to CUDA and then set the model to evaluation mode. Now video file is arguments.video and we'll start to capture the video. Now if video cannot be captured, that means there is no video file provided. Just send in the output message that cannot capture the source. Now while the video is open, try to capture each and every frame. And after you capture each and every frame, you prepare that frame for, for inputting into the network. And then as in the previous video, we are making predictions in three scales. So the input dimension has to be repeated two, two more times. Again, if CUDA is available, send both of them to CUDA. While torch.nograd, we'll just get the output and then write the results as in the previous video. Now, if in this frame, there has been no object detected, just show the original frame and use wait key. Now, if anywhere along this, if user enters X as an input, the program will break. Otherwise it will continue. An integer is detected, that means there has been no object detected. So it, this part of this loop will continue, but what if an object is detected? Then what we'll do is we'll again scale it back to the original size that as we have done in the previous video with the image, that's the same thing. And then we we'll use, we'll use Lambda, we'll use Lambda to write all the objects in the original image and then output that. And again, we'll show the next frame, wait for the key and if X is entered, we'll break it. Now this else part, frame it cannot be read, just break the program. So that's the end of it. I guess this is the shortest video in the series, but this is the most interesting one because we'll now run this. Okay. So it's loading the network. Network loaded successfully. 
Okay, here's the output. This is the trailer for Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. As you can see, it is already detecting all of these things. Now, if you want more accuracy in terms of detections and the object sizes, you can increase the resolution in the uh, parser. But as you can already see, I'm getting really low FPS frame rates. So what I've done is I've already recorded this output and I will just play that for you with 2x speed so that you can see the real output. So I'll just quit this program by pressing X and here I have this recorded one. So here it is. Now I'll just speed it up. Now you can see it detects all the cars, bus and persons here. So this is real time object detection in action. Anyway, I'll upload this entire video on my channel so you can watch this entire video if you want to for reference. But I'm not gonna just let it play and do nothing and it will just increase the length of this video. So, so that is it for this video and I have played around with this quite a lot. So I have tested it on trailers for Ocean's 12, Amazing Spider-Man and a lot of other movies. You can test it out on any sort of video you want. Again, as I've said in the previous video, I wanted to play around with it, break it and then try to rebuild it by your own. And also on my channel, you'll find most of the content is related to computer vision. And uh, now I guess I should move on to other topics such as such as conventional machine learning and also NLP. So if you want me to cover any such topic, just mention it in the comment section and make sure it's not something that cannot be covered in one video. Because from now on, I think I should start making videos that don't span for, you know, five or 10 videos. Make sure the topics are precise and not as big as this project right, that I've undertaken right here. So. Thanks for watching. If you have any doubts, please mention in the comments. And if you want me to cover something else, just mention it in the comments. I have not planned the next video yet, so I don't know what it's going to be, but it will be amazing. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.